Hi, this is Griselda Togobo, and this is the Leadership Podcast, where I have the privilege of sitting with amazing female leaders to share practical and simple strategies to help you win at work and in life. So I have been waiting for this interview for a while now, and it's an absolute pleasure to have Mamogeti, a professor, an educator, as someone who's won several awards for her work in research in the community. Um, she's just really a force of nature, and I can't wait to share her story with you and her journey with you as well. So, Mama Getty, thank you so much for making time for us. Thank you so much, Griselda. Really a pleasure to talk to you. Yes, I know the two of us have been talking and we can't wait yeah. to get started. So I'm hoping we can give people some, some things to work with today. So I yeah. want to start from your from your childhood, yeah. growing up in rural South Africa in apartheid and yeah. becoming the first female South African to earn a PhD in mathematics education. Mm. How did you make that happen? How did that happen? Because that didn't happen for everybody else. Well, I mean, it's true. It didn't happen to, for everyone else. Um, I guess it is luck of having um, parents who are committed to education, despite the fact that they were not educated. And I'm saying luck because we really don't choose our parents. And I always think, even though I grew up poor, I think when it comes to parents, I, I won the lottery. Yes. Because, because they were so committed to education and they preached to us the importance of being excellent and mm -hmm. the fact that that's the only way that's going get to get us out of poverty. That was yes. drummed into us from when we were young, that being excellent in what you do and pursuing education is the only thing that's going to get out. My dad used to say, I have nothing to give you. That's the only thing I can do. And, and, and it's was, so true, isn't it? Yeah, it's they, something no one can take that away from you. Absolutely. And so so the mathematics, of course, even came from there because um, I grew up with no knowledge at all that mathematics is difficult. No one ever mentioned that. I had that for the first time when I got to university. And the only reason I knew was that people, you know, thought you are special if you're majoring in mathematics. And of course, it's not yes. a first year, second year, it's a third year because it was a four-year degree. A third year, many people have dropped out of maths at that time. And there I was with another girl and with eight boys. So wow. we were in maths third year class. And, and that's when it emerged that actually this is quite precious. But actually, I grew up knowing, having no idea that a lot of people find mathematics difficult. For me, it was a hiding place. For me, it was a cop-out because it was the one subject that I could do without having to memorize too much. Right. Whereas, yeah, in all the other subjects, biology required me to memorize quite yeah. a lot. History required this. Everything required the same level of memorization. Whereas with mathematics, if I get the big idea, so it felt like yes. if there's any memorization to do it's really small it's the big idea from there you've got it you you you, you use your your thinking and then you can uh, uh, get get the problem solved you don't even have to solve them the way the teacher solved it wow what freedom so for me it was like for me it was like yes that's what i'm gonna do my god so we can do that i can do it my way yes whereas everything else it wasn't my way if the bone is called this, that's what it's called, period. You cannot call it anything else or, or, or whatever. That's what it is. Whereas with mathematics, this equation, you can solve it this way, but you can solve it whichever way you like. As yes. Long as you understand how to solve equations. I can so relate to that because I avoided English and all the other things because I just couldn't remember what things exactly. were called whereas with math I also did physics chemistry math and with math I just felt I don't have to remember anything I just need to understand what's going on and hopefully I'll be able to remember that but yeah. isn't it so special that in the backdrop of apartheid that mm -hmm. nothing seeped into your consciousness about being black in apartheid about being a woman 
about being poor, how did all this get filtered out? Because it's giving you this quite a holistic view of the world that other people might not have because all that seeped in. No, it, it, that wasn't filtered out. The fact that we black, we poor, I'm a woman, that was always in the foreground because my dad, right. my dad was a furious, was a furious black man. Um, <laughs> he worked for the SABC. He was one of the first black people to be on radio. He didn't have, he didn't finish high school. Very smart. He was a, a program compiler, music compiler, and he acted on radio. Right. And he hated it. So the one story that he hated the most and he would tell us over and over again was the, the fact that uh, every so many years, a young white African speaking boy comes to join the broadcasting corporation and he has to teach them their job and then they are going to be his, his boss. boss. So he hated that. In fact, it, uh, that was so not filtered out. Apartheid was so present at home that my dad hated the homeland system, wow. uh, which was a product of apartheid. And, and I remember after the homeland, uh, our area became part of a homeland. One of the words that he used to use a lot was propaganda. I mean, I had no idea what's propaganda. Uh, but my dad said it so many times that we had to learn what is we propaganda. We had to learn, yeah. What is propaganda? You so, know, so... so he, he, he hated the homeland so much that even though he was upset with how the white people were treating him as, at work and the homeland, which is for Botswana, had a radio station that mm -hmm. had the yeah, black people, black people doing, he hated that because he said, this is a propaganda machine, the homeland system, they are brainwashing us, you know? So he still, in, the, in our home, we were not allowed to listen to a radio wow. book. We were supposed to listen to Radio Setswana because yes. that, even though that was an apartheid machine, it was a machine that he knows and it was yes. a propaganda that he knows. This one, he said, the worst. This is like brainwashed black people to give <laughs> propaganda and here to brainwash us. So, so it was very much with us. But th there were things that he was emphasizing yes. that uh, you're not a victim. So yes. he always said, you're not a victim. You must stand your ground. And, and the other thing that he said was, never, ever accept breadcrumbs from anyone. It doesn't matter how poor you are. He said, you must be an arrogant, poor person. You must be, even if you're poor, you'd rather go hungry. I can relate to that. Bread, than grab crumbs on the floor. Yes. And yes. so th those kind of things, he, he taught us those kind of things that uh, stayed with us, you know. Mm. And also when it comes to apartheid, that's what he did. The other thing that my, my, my dad did, I mean, my dad was interesting. I mean, he, he also made us believe we were smart. Yes. I mean, I look back and I'm like, we were not smart. We were not the most smartest kids in the township. But he went around telling everyone, that my children are the smartest. Aww. We would get school reports and we wouldn't be the first in class. Yes. But he would tell everybody that we are the smartest. And then when, when he has visitors on a Saturday and they're drinking alcohol, he would call me and my sister and say, there they are. Tell them your name, tell them <laughs> what grade you're doing. And then after we said it and he would say, now, these are my children. You can ask them any question. Oh, I bet you will answer it. Oh my and God! The, the people are not so educated, so the the questions they asked were not book curriculum based questions. But they yeah. were problem solving, logic, whatever. And I was such a, 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 a an adult pleaser. I always, I mean, oh. I like winning. We can talk about this. Griselda, I like winning. I like getting things right. You know, I'm yes. not going to be sacrificing for that. And my, my sister used to say when we leave, uh, after answering, we'd leave. And she, one day she said, um, next time she calls us, he calls us, we must get the answer wrong. Please don't answer. Because if we get the answer wrong, he will never call us again. Because he'll oh, be no, And then I would agree that. with my younger sister. I would agree with her. Yes, yes, you will do that. But next time they call us, I'll do the same because I could never bring myself 
to getting it wrong. You know, it was like my reputation is at stake. I could not get this right. You know, even as a kid, I liked winning. I like yeah, winning. Yeah, yeah. But I love, you know, Mama Getty, one of the things I love about you is that you're so authentically you. Thank you're you. loud and you're proud and you wear your hat on your sleeves and you support who you choose to support. And even though we have a lot more women in leadership now, they're still quite constrained, quite conservative, quite toying the line. And you definitely don't toe the line. Um, if you're listening to me and you don't believe me, go and check out her Twitter feed <laughs> and you get what I mean. So what gives you this confidence to just absolutely just be yourself? And, and because women tend to be criticized for how they look, for how they behave, but you don't let that worry you at all. I mean, I, I think, I think first of all, it's easy. It's easy again, another cop out because I don't have to remember what I'm pretending to be. I can just be me. Do you know what I mean? I don't have to remember anything. I can just do it. It's me, right? But but the the, the second thing is that um, I think I think I mean I grew up shy. My mother would say at my home, um, with my siblings, I'm the introvert. Many people don't wow. believe it. Well, that's the family I come from. People are extroverted. Um, but when I turned 40 and I, 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 I hosted a birthday party for myself, my mother gave a speech. I had her on the program. She was one of the first people to speak. And she said to me, she said to the audience, um, this is a special baby. She was, oh. born in a, she was born in a sex. So I was born in a placenta at a Roman Catholic clinic. Uh, I was the only baby born on that day, and it was the 1st of November, which is All Saints Day. Yes. yes. She said to me, you are a saint. I have always known whatever happens, oh. I'm out okay. And of course, I said to her, you should have told me at 15. I mean, you know, I was a professor at that time. I got a doctorate. I'm doing well. You know, I've sweated so much. I could have relaxed knowing that it will all be okay. Oh. But it's like when I turned 40, truth is I, I embraced my freedom. I embraced who I am. I, I became at peace with who I am. And I yes. realized, you know, there's no turning back. No. This is who I am. Um, whether I have dimples on my thighs, this is it. My thighs are beautiful. And I am beautiful as I am. Of course, I can always be a better version of me. But I can yeah. only be me. I can never be someone else. And, and I, 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 since I embraced that, um, it's given me freedom to be comfortable, mm. by, you know, um, uh, and not thinking that I've got to tweak myself here, tweak myself there. That's, you know, that's not to say you, you, you don't do humane, humane things and so on. You do, you, 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 you know, you, 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 there are, there are, rules of being human the unwritten yes. rules yes. existence with mm. other humans that i subscribe to um but but i'm me you know i'm, I'm not vice chancellor being vice chancellor is temporary it's gonna it's end and when it ends what remains when you take it off what remains it means yes so so that me is is the me that shows up every day because I wasn't born vice chancellor. I wasn't born professor. I was born Mamukheti. And, yes. and that's the person who must show up every day. And if you relate with me, you'd know that this is it. It's not like tomorrow you've got to wait and think, how is she going to come out as? And what do I do? This is it. You know? And I think it's it's easier. It's much more comfortable. And and uh, it's it's a much better way of being. It is uh, absolutely a much better way of being because you're you're aligned. You're not being inauthentic, like you yes. said. You don't have to remember the script, <laughs> the person you're trying to be. You don't have to remember the script because you're just living yourself as you are. But isn't it just incredible that we have to turn forty to feel like that? Because when yeah. I turned forty, I had exactly the same experience where I thought, past halfway point, as I call it. I don't have time to be messing around. This is what I have yeah. to work with. And I, I either love it or I become miserable and I choose to love it. And I just embrace 
everything yeah. and and then you realize that actually life is not so bad but I wish I had been like that in my 20s because my 20s I was very introverted and very quiet and I I just wonder what we can tell anyone listening to this who hasn't 10 40 years what they can start to do now so they can start to be themselves and enjoy their lives more fully absolutely I mean I have I have on my computer a list of things that I wish someone told me and I've got different I, before I turned 21 before I turned 40 before I went into the world of work before I became VC and every time I get invited to speak to young people I choose mm. three and I say wow. Here, things that I wish someone told me at graduation or at my 21st or depending on what the event is and and I I do that because I found that that's actually much more meaningful for young people because Mm -hmm. I can then tell them examples from my own life I can say number one is this number three is this I draw from examples of my own life you know and 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 I think that's the best way to tell young people when I on you know on women's month uh, when I'm invited to give speeches, I give speeches that are my experience, mm. you know, um, because then I can draw from my own stories yes, so, yes. That, so that other people can learn from them. But but I found that these things, I mean, for on the list of the things that I wish someone told me before I'm 21, I mean, there's there's so many things about building relationships, about wearing yes. shorts, wearing shorts and stop thinking you're too fat. Because one day you're going to have bloody dimples on your thighs. Don't wait. I still wear the shorts, though. I, well, I don't wear them as much as I could have because I I, yes. I, I also, I mean, I just realized, you know, when I was 15, I thought I'm too fat. And I yes. was skinny, right? Yeah. And I wore yeah. shorts, but not as much. You know, I could have worn them every weekend in summer, you know? You're so, right. So, so, and and I see young people who wear long dresses, who are scared to show their knees and, oh, no, that's too short, you know. And, and I'm like, one day you will not have these beautiful legs. You can wear shorts, but they will not be the same. Look, yes. They will not be the same way. <laughs> that's the truth. You know what I mean? It is. It's it truth, is. You know? It is. And, and then, of course, don't drink your life away simply because your friends are doing it. You know, know, because you are gonna grow and you need that damn liver. <laughs> you know what I mean? This liver of yours must take you beyond 25. So if you're drinking your life away, your liver away before you turn 21, do you think it will be there at 30? So think about it. Don't um, don't smoke, smoke your lungs away. You know, that's the things that 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 you know look cool when you're young mm-hmm. and they don't look so they they actually when people are older it's like you waste it man you waste it one of the things i experienced with my friend recently when i was little i never took photos so if you look there are no photos of me which is such a shame because i just lack so much confidence in wow. myself and i didn't think i was beautiful enough when i yeah. got married my husband kept telling me let's take more photos i'm like no i don't want to take photos and then yeah. when it turned 40, I went on holiday with one of my friends and yeah. she was taking photos and she made us all take photos. And I was like, wow. Zelda, her name is Zelda. And she said, Zelda, yeah. why are you taking so much photos? She said, Griselda, when you go back and you look at the photos, you will yeah. be so pleased you did because you're not going to look like that anymore. You think you look fat well wait for 10 years and you'll be amazed how gorgeous you look now so i'm taking so many photos and i just wish i had done more of that um we have our phones now yeah 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 i mean i take a lot of photos i take videos my children take videos i do this they take a video i walk i talk a lot i get animated they take a video like they take videos when i'm not even watching they ask me some time ago can you take videos so i've got lots of that and i and i I think it's important because it is. imagine your grandchildren, your nephews, your grandnieces and whatever, it, it, it will mean so much for them, you know, yeah. uh, when, when you, it will mean more for you, to you, but it will mean even mm-hmm. more even for them. More. It's true. Um, You're right. So, so you mentioned people pleasing. So is that something you've overcome or are you still on that journey? No, I'm not. I'm not pleasing people. Oh no, 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 it's too tiring. No, 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 no. You know, I have a life. 
it is a very short life we have on this earth. Mm. And we've got to realize that and live it well, you know. So I don't. I don't. It's just too tiring. I, 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 you know, I, I do good because it makes me feel good. Yes. And it makes me feel good because people around me, when people around me are comfortable, then I can be comfortable. Yes. Um, yes. So I'm not interested in uh, pleasing people. Doing it for accolade. Because it's it makes me it makes me feel human. Yes. That that's why I do good because I feel human, and and I know sometimes I say I know I could have been there, or sometimes it's like I was there. That kid reminds me of me. Oh yeah. That's why I want to do good, and then I feel good. Like wow, the world could be a better place if we all did this. It's not too much, you know. So yeah. I do I do good. When I do good, it's for me. When I challenge a situation, it's because I really believe it has to be challenged. I, I don't, I, I have no time to play to the gallery. I think if I did, uh, probably people would, would, everyone would love me because I would just do that. We I mean, love you already. <laughs> the reason why I do have detractors is because I don't play to the gallery. Yes, you don't. Do what, what's in the interest of the institution I'm leading and what 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 makes me human? I try yes. to do this is what's human, you know. Yeah. So in a recent LinkedIn post, you write about saying no, and, yeah. and the art of leadership being about saying no, and that women are expected to just say yes all the time, and and you don't you know you don't feel compelled to do that, mm -hmm. and and I know when women have that approach. Because you're expected to be compliant and motherly and nurturing and all that stuff. So you always say yes to everything. Um, yeah. They do get some backlash from that. And yeah. I know you've also had some backlash as well. So what gives you that confidence to keep saying no when everybody's forcing you to say otherwise? You know, yes is easy. Because yes makes people happy. So everyone around you is happy. And the test of leadership is when you have to say no. Mm -hmm. And bad leaders, of course, never say no. They either say yes or they keep quiet. And then it depends on the people whom they lead. And I have learned that as you go up the leadership ladder, actually, there are no right or wrong answers often. There are mm -hmm. no wrong or right, there are no wrong or right decisions, but there are decisions. And the worst leaders is one, who, those who don't make decisions. So I, I don't mind if it's a no, because uh, it is not in the interest of the institution. It's not in your interest as a young academic or as a department or as whatever, I will say it. And, and my, my view always is you may not understand it now. Okay. But I'm convinced that with time, you'll understand it. You know, so, so, and I get a lot of backlash for that. I mean, I, I, I say no for a lot of things. And, um, but I do say yes to a lot. And, and by yes. the way, any decision that I say yes or no, there's always people who celebrate and there's always people who don't. But, you know, as much as I get backlash, I am so at peace at knowing that mm. many years from now, there'll be so many people who will say she was here. Yes. We criticized her, we beat her up, we called her names, but damn, did we have a good leader? Mm. And maybe some might say she was ahead of her time. Mm. And, and I'm at peace with that. I'm at peace with that because um, I don't follow a script. I don't follow a script. I don't play to the gallery. I don't, I do what I believe is in the interest of my university. This is a top university. Vice yes. chancellors come and go. Vice chancellors come and go, but the university must outlive me. And for yes. it to outlive me and to succeed into the future, 
I should not think only about me now and what people say and try to do things just so that people like me. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. It's in the interest of the institution. They might not like it now. If it's good for the institution, they will definitely like it in the future because yeah. that my children and my children's children and their children and their children's children should be able to come to this university and benefit. The whole of the continent has to be able to do that. If I don't make a good decisions in that way and sometimes having to say no, then, then I, you know, I often said, I once said to students, you know, that if I said yes to everything that you want, then you'll be the last people to benefit. Mm. You'll be the last because actually we don't have endless resources. So when I say no, it's not because I don't want you to get what you want. It's because I'm not just thinking about you. Mm -hmm building something bigger so that others after you can also benefit. And my sense is that even if you say no, it may be tough, but with time, everyone will appreciate the no. Women are not expected to say no. No. You know, and, and, and if you say no, people, people get surprised because, um, and many people don't like saying no because they don't want to be hated. Yes. You know, it's a hot seat hot seat they don't want to be haters so they don't want they want to be liked and so they say yes so i know you're going through a particularly challenging time and i go on twitter and i see you and you're you're dancing and you're celebrating <laughs> and you're posting positive empowering things and i'm just yeah. like wow you almost choose to Step in front of your critics and to show them that you're you're still standing, and almost that the arrows you're throwing at you don't yes. don't don't hurt, harm you, don't hurt you. I think that that's such a brave thing to do. It's such a courageous thing to do, and it's also very inspiring because there's so many women, particularly in the UK, where when there's a lot of um, trolling on social media and, you know, name calling, they just go, they disappear off the account, know. they go. But you are not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. You know, this is my birthday month. You know, it's my birthday month. I'm turning 56. I'm not going to turn 56 again. again. This is it. This is it. I am not going to lose it. I'm not going to lose this month miss it simply because there are some people who are making spurious allegations i'm not gonna do that give them joy lose my birthday month and not celebrate it unfortunately i'm not gonna do that secondly you know it's interesting there are people who are offended by my dancing i'm like wow yeah what kind of how many people do you see who are professors who are vice chancellors dancing so we no, but people must be impressed that I can dance. Yes, yes. But some are offended. Yes, some they are. And then I'm like, okay, Griselda, here's the thing. I was a competitive dancer. As a young person at university, I was a competitive dancer. Mm. So dancing is not rocket science for me. Oh, it's just that now you're seeing it on, I'm posting it. No, 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 it's not rocket science. I was a competitor. I won trophies for dancing. <laughs> so, hello. Now, am I stopping me? Because you are feeling like this is not what VCs should do. VCs <laughs> don't dance. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if your VCs don't dance. I danced <laughs> competitively. And it's a good way to exercise. It's a good way to de-stress. Why not? But so, we love you because so you're I, teaching young people, you're giving them permission that you can yeah. be an academic and you can love dancing, you can love. So it's giving access to more people. And that's what we should be aiming for. Yeah. And, and you know that some of the comments from the trolls are, are interesting. One wrote, uh, this is not the way a vice chancellor, a vice chancellor should behave. Here's the thing. Who wrote the manual for how vice chancellors should behave? First of all, I'm dressed fully. It's not like I'm dancing in a bikini. You know, I'm not naked. I'm just properly. Who wrote the manual? So we talk about decolonizing 
higher education, decolonizing knowledge, decolonizing yes. whatever. Yeah. But you yeah. still tell me about a model of a vice chancellor. Is that the Western model? What model is that? You at least ask me a question. Don't don't give me a prescription. Okay. So 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 for me, that's that's the thing. And and here's the thing, you know, my mother once said to me many years ago, she said, you know, two things. You must never ever look like your problems. Number two, never ever cry at work. She said, you can cry about work, but never at work. Never make your colleagues ever make you cry in front of them, mm. especially for pain. If you cry of happiness or don't cry about the things about work at work eh, because they will do it more, what are you going to do? Keep crying? You're going to be a crybaby? If it gets tough, go to the toilet. Sort cry, yourself cry. out. Sort yourself out. Get up face it and deal with it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm not about to look like my problems. Does it mean the things that are happening don't hurt me and get me down? Mm. They do. But there's a time and space for that, that I I, I don't have to wear it on my sleeve. So, mm. You see me on social media, you should see me on campus. I go on campus, I go to meetings, I walk up campus, go to meetings, meet people, go on in a meeting as if nothing is happening. Because there's work to do. Life doesn't stop simply no. because there are challenges. And yeah. our detractors, our detractors want our lives to stop. Criselda, I've chosen to live. It's a choice. I could have taken my life. I chose to live. And so I am going to live. So every morning I remind myself, I chose to live. And I thank God that he has allowed me to make this I, choice. You know, my heart just breaks just hearing you say that because when you're talking about the impact of some of the challenges people face at work and how it impacts their mental health and how it makes them feel and, and you know, the suicidal ideation and all that, people think, oh, it's, you know, it's weak. You're weak if you're, you have any kind of mental health. And, and the fact that you... You say it so publicly, and for somebody in your position to be saying that, that actually this is getting to me, but this is how I deal with it. I think it, that is just so amazing, and that you say that you've chosen life, and it gives everybody permission to do yeah. the same. I mean, I had a tough time. 2020 was rough, 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 rough. And suicide ideation was here. I, I had planned, how do you do this? What's the best way to do it? And so on. Um, and I'm glad I, I'm over that. I'm glad I got help. Yes. And I'm glad I'm here. But I'm not just here just by chance or whatever. It's a conscious choice yes. to, live. to live. It's a conscious choice. It's not autopilot that I'm just going. No, no, no. I'm not. No, 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 no. So, 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 and and I think. You know, to the point of talking about our mental health issues when when we are not in our best way, I think I think I, I, it is it is important for young people, or even for people to know that even so called strong women yes have mental health issues. Mm -hmm. and and to know that actually it doesn't mean it's the end. It's not the end of you. It doesn't mean you're not capable. It doesn't mean you're weak. It doesn't mean, you know, you can still get help. And I think that's probably the best that some young people, are, you know, can get, the best lesson they can get. Because when yeah. you get that position, you feel alone. You feel like you're the only one who's going through this, you know? And so if you get someone who says, I've gone through this, I've, this is what happened, this is then maybe you can handle it differently. Maybe you can have the boldness mm -hmm. to take the disease on, you know, to take the illness on and get well and make good choices for you and your family, you know? Yeah. I, 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 I think um, um, I, I often feel like my, my life should be a lesson to other people from 
perhaps the things that mistakes that I make, people will learn from them and do better. But the things that I do good, people can learn from them. But also who I am and what I what I encounter and what I overcome. I think mm-hmm. everyone can learn from that. And and it doesn't mean it doesn't help anybody to present that to pretend that I have a perfect, seamless, unproblematic life. No. But it's it, it helps to to for people to know that life is complex. Yes. We can, we can still be happy, we, you know. We can still be happy. You know what I mean? Because I'm happy. I'm happy. That doesn't mean I'm not I, I don't have uh, circumstances in my life that are challenging. Yeah. I'm happy. I'm in a good place. I'm in a I'm at peace. So, Mama Gessie, what role do you think race is played in all this? Because we started off with the backdrop of apartheid South Africa. We've now moved on 2020, 2022, but we still have that racial backdrop happening all the time. And in the UK, it's 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 a different story. But I always wonder what role race is playing in some of the challenges, particularly Black women in leadership roles face. Um, because it's tough for everyone, but there just seems to be a different lens and layer of toughness that we have to go through. The race plays a huge role. I mean, when you get to, a, to when you get appointed to a position such as this as a black woman, um, first many people who haven't looked at your CV wonder whether you can do the job. Mm-hmm. Did they scrape? Someone wrote and said the UCT scraped the bar, the bottom of the barrel to get a vice chancellor. Okay, they oh, never looked yeah. at my CV. They never looked at my CV, right? Um, and and so if you are you are capable, if you can, you do your job. Uh, uh, I mean, I often think that there are three things that you should never be caught with your pants down on: do your job properly. Don't be don't drink too much alcohol and make mistakes because they're gonna catch you. Don't steal, don't steal money. Okay, the fourth thing we can say, don't be promiscuous. Because that's very easy to get to. Yes, okay. yes. Everybody easy. felt, everybody can fall on those things, yes. Those things are very easy to for people to fall on. And many Black people are caught, they test. So when they catch me on personality and what, what, I'm like, wow. Oh. I they checked the Black uh, a test. Does she know her job? Yes. The university was not leading in all the five major world university rankings. Now it does. does. Mm -hmm. And the business school had fallen off the rankings. Now it's back since she took office. They thought things would go worse. They haven't. No. Okay. So she's doing her job. The university was forever in protest before she took office. She comes to the university down. She's engaging with the students. Uh, We we are moving forward, right? That's not to say students are not, they are no, there's no activism, there's activism. Mm-hmm. But it, it, it unfolds differently. Yes. Okay. Now, she doesn't drink alcohol. She's never had alcohol in her life and she's not planning to start. Okay, so you're never going to find her drunk. Yes. Okay. So forget it. They go to the third one. Um... She doesn't steal money. In fact, in fact, she saves the university money. She donates 20% of her salary to the university every month since she took office. When she travels overseas, she's got such a high um, um, uh, profile that she normally doesn't travel on university money because other universities overseas pay for her. And then when she gets there, she does university money. It will work. She does university work. So in fact, the university saves on her. Because half the time the university doesn't pay. If the university pays, she refuses to fly business class. She flies economy. She refused to have a driver. She refused to have a bodyguard. She doesn't wow. have security at her gate. She doesn't have a leave-in maid for the university to pay for. She doesn't have a cook. She said no to all of that. She's bloody saving the university money. So is she stealing money? No. No. Actually, she's making you yeah, money. money. She's a good deal. Financially, she's a good deal. Yes, a very good deal. 
very good deal. What did I say? The fourth one is, is she promiscuous? Oh, far from it. Men are bloody scared of her. <laughs> Real talk. You know, so, I mean, are you going to get her with a pen down? No, you're not. No. So what do you do? What do you do? You've got to go for the personality. That's an easy way to go, right? You've got to go for the personality. Yes. You've got to say, mm, her leadership style, you know. Um, she's dancing. Dancing. She goes into social media. She's too much. Can she she's... just tone down? You know. You know what I mean? Uh, um, her demands are too much. Her standards are too high. So she's too demanding and other people feel bullied or so. You know, you, you say, you, you've got to find some something that's not... But, but you know what? That bullying thing you've just said now, it's quite a trend with black women because yes. you're seen as aggressive, you're manly, you're too strong. So any you no know you say, it's like the way you said the no is too aggressive. And and it's just such a telling thing when it comes as part of the rule. When is the feedback that is coming through that an institution has to yeah. has a but, proper but challenge? Is- They've got to try these four easy things. So if they go beyond that, they go to personalities, then you should know they actually oh, wow. failed. They actually failed. <laughs> they failed. So, Marguerite, if you're running out of time, what is the 4 a.m. club? The 3 a.m. past 3 a.m. squad. Past 3 a.m. squad, yes. What is the past 3 a.m. squad? You know, it's a group of people online. I started the past 3 a.m. squad, I can't remember, 2015 or earlier, uh, because I wake up at past 3 a.m. And and often when I wake up, I, I wake up at 5, and I think 3 is just like... I know, it's crazy, but yes. <laughs> and, what time do you uh, go to bed? It depends. It doesn't matter, really. I mean, ideally, it should be 10 o'clock. Uh, then, then I'll be fine. But... But I mean, it depends. Wow. Sometimes, oh, sometimes, sometimes eleven p.m. Simply because maybe I've been, I'm in a function or whatever. Mm-hmm. But ideally, I would like to do ten. Okay. Um, and 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 I started this to when I started, I would put a a a, a, a motivational thing, yes. inspirational post on my social media pages on on Twitter particularly. And and then um, people would respond. Then I thought, oh, there's a squad. So I did hashtag past 3 squad and people would start. And then I did start encouraging postgraduate students in particular, but university students to let's wake up at three and let's, let's push, let's yeah, push. Yeah, yeah, Almost yeah. like you people with you, even when they're not there, but mm. they're online. It's like you've got a, a you know, a squad. A community, yeah, yeah. And, and and I mean, what's happened is that there are uh, uh, three young people who then we met online and uh, they then uh, uh, were interested in helping. So I was like, you are CEO, you are COO, you are project manager. Now we get on. They started a Twitter handle and, and then during the lockdown, um, I did sessions on Sundays, every Sunday from four to five. Sunday afternoon uh, and the past 3M squad for the past 3M squad. So I ran research lessons. Uh, like I would teach a postgraduate class. So I was wow. teaching a class for, yeah. I did 70 of them, you know, every Sunday. But you know, it was locked down. We were at home. Yes, and, yes, 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 yes. So it oh. Following was just fantastic. And the past 3M squad, these three young people, I would meet with them and say what the focus, is this, you know, the feedback? They would collect the questions. Uh, once we uh, have put up what we'll be focusing on, people will send questions. They will collect the questions and then send them to me and then I'll respond to them on the weekend, you know. Wow. Yeah, so it, it's, it, yeah, it's really a community of people online, young people online mm. who encourage one another, who inspire one another. And um, yeah, it's great. I think it's great. So, like, so you're, make- big, you're big on routines, I'm big on routine. Oh, I am big on routine. Yeah. So yeah. share share one. So someone looking at you will be thinking 56. Oh my God. And you're still waking up at 3 a.m. 
and you have this role that is so senior, and you have kids you've adopted, some, some are biological, okay, and she's married. You know, it just seems like you take all the boxes and you still have time to show up looking amazing. So share some tips. What was the routine that you follow? We will all learn. In the morning, past 3 a.m. I get up. Uh, as I brush my teeth, I switch on um, the salmon by um, Joel Austin. Oh, yes. Anyone, you know, you know Joel Austin. Yes, I uh, so I listen to Joel Austin in the morning because his ministry is interesting. His ministry is about uplifting and yes. inspiring. So it's good to wake up to it. So I wake up to that. As I brush my teeth, I'm listening to Joel Austin. Who right. Tells who God is to me, what God says about me. You know, yeah. and, and it goes the same on. And then after that, I'm done with brushing my whatever, my water is ready. As soon as I get into the bath, I switch on meditation music, and then I'm in the bath. And it's like mm -hmm. meditation, meditation, I pray. And then get up, and then I get on to, um, a, 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 to do my makeup. When I do my makeup, I listen to podcasts. Oh. So I'd listen to one, yeah, so I'd listen to one episode of a podcast that's that's either encouraging or or, or educational. I mean, um, a Diary of a CEO is one that I listen yes, to. Yes, yes, Stephen Bartlett, yes, yes. I listen to Stephen Bartlett, maybe one, you know, um, episode whilst I'm doing my makeup. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then... Like four thirty, I'm done, or five o'clock, I'm done. If I'm doing slowly, like I'm doing makeup, but I'm listening. So yes, often I'm not in a rush, you know. Yes. So every and whilst I'm doing makeup, by the way, I'm I'm also learning. I've been learning to do eye shades of different colors, so I learn that. You have to me. teach me, eh? Because I can't do that. YouTube. YouTube. So sometimes I would open YouTube if I don't know how to do that. I would open YouTube in the morning while something that, oh, that's how to do it. I learned that. And then I learned different colors. So people think, where do you learn makeup? Well, every day when I go to work, um, I do practicing. this. I make practicing. You do yeah. it every day. And then yeah. it gets better by the day. Yeah. So yeah, but by, by 5, 5.30, I'm sitting here and working. Wow. But I've sort and of... What all of that sort of routine. Yes. Um, is there any book you recommend? You mentioned a podcast, but is there a book you recommend? But you know, the podcast, the, the book, I, I I really, really, I, I always recommend um, uh, Malcolm Gladwell's David yes. and Goliath. David and Goliath. Yes. I mean, I, I like him overall, but I think David and Goliath is always a good one to recommend because... We often think that what we call our weaknesses are our weaknesses, but actually they may be our strength. You know, if, if you think about it. And, and, and I think for me, that, that book brings that to the fore. Mm. Uh, so, so it helped me change my perspective about what's my weakness. Right. You know, what I think is my weakness. Is actually my strength. So how do I draw on that, which people think it's a weakness, or I think it's a weakness? How can I draw on it as a strength? And mm. how can I see it as a strength? And and so you know, David looked disadvantaged in front of Goliath. Yes, yes, it's a powerful story. But his size was a problem, but but actually, John they, Goliath looked like he's well equipped for whatever. But we didn't see other things that, that are not there. The, David's so-called weaknesses, were size, whatever. Exactly. Goliath, uh, uh, Malcolm Gladwell unpacks uh, Goliath's um, uh, downsides. Mm. Yeah, in the book, I won't say well, I won't kill it. I think people must read it. But Yes, but yes. Showing that the fact that you grew up poor might not be such a bad thing. Thing, a weakness as such mm. your greatest strength because it actually might have given you some other skills that other people could mm. never have yes yes but until you see it as such 
you will never treat it as such. And therefore you never benefit from it. You'll always mm. complain about it. You know, but there's a lot of other things, you know, that 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 yeah, I think that, that I would recommend that book because I fabulous. Think- oh Mama Gessi, thank you so much for such an interesting, enlightening, fun chat. I mean I am going to read the book. I'm going to keep following you on social media. Please follow her on social media, on LinkedIn as well. Um, And just watch this space because she's so incredible. And I want to do more with her. And we hope that we can bring you more as well. So if this is your first time watching this on LinkedIn or listening on Spotify or podcast, please subscribe and give us a review. Let me know if it's good so I can bring you more interesting people like Mamugeti. And um, let us also know if there are some people you'd like me to interview as well. And if you're new to the forum, yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Zelda. You and I, we're going to be best friends. So we're already going to meet. So that's happening. You are are on my speed dial. What are you saying? (laughs) Well, you know, my favorite part of today is I'm not promiscuous. The men are afraid of me. Of course, how lucky can I be? <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I know you've said you have meetings, so yes, yes, I yes. will leave you now. Thank you so much. We'll upload it so you can see. Bye. Bye-bye.